Speaking of all of these streaming services, Tom, the last time you were on, we, we talked about what if Raw went to a streaming service and I expressed my concerns over it. I got to be honest, the, a lot of those concerns, I mean, in all reality, go bye-bye because of the amount of money that they're going to bring in. I mean, if they kill Raw, no big deal. For the amount of money you got, if it's time to do something later, you can do something later. But I don't think they're going to kill Raw. And it ended up being on Netflix, which is a platform that Nick Khan had talked about wanting to get uh, one of the WWE shows onto, and he has done that now. It looks like it's going to be a much broader deal than just Raw. Obviously, globally, it's going to encompass all of the shows and premium live events at some point, but you had talked about preferring Amazon as a landing spot for Raw. What are your thoughts on them actually moving to streaming, going to Amazon, and or we're going to, to to Netflix, and are you disappointed about that? I wouldn't say I'm disappointed, <laughs> but I thought that with the success that Amazon had seen with the NFL and having live programming on there, that they would have, you know, been the front runner. And I'm not the only one that thought that. Um, I was surprised when I woke up and I saw that Netflix was the eventual landing space. But like you mentioned, Mike, even if they kill Raw. By moving it to Netflix, they're making so much money. And by moving NXT to the CW network, they've opened themselves up to a completely new audience that perhaps they wouldn't have otherwise. So I don't think it's a bad idea to take this risk, if you can call it that. You know, um, one of the biggest things that I'm intrigued by now is the UFC has a right deal that will be up somewhat soon. And is this a glimpse into the future of what the UFC will do? Will they divest their shows like they did in the past where we'd have UFC on Fuel, you'd have programming on Spike, they'd show up on Fox, I believe, every once in a while. Are we going to move back to something along those lines? ESPN now has the co-leader, I guess, in mixed martial arts, the PFL and Bellator uh, union, at least on their programming network. So do we see the UFC move away from ESPN? Do we see the UFC stay on ESPN and also add or move some of their programming to other networks? You know, the Netflix stock went way up today. Are other companies going to see that and say, hey, we want a piece of this programming? Yeah, it's it's really there's still some there it, again it's fascinating for so many reasons that obviously don't have anything to do with inside the ring which drives people nuts but I'm really interested in that aspect of it and what happens with the WWE network because we're going to have as it stands right now at the end of the year we're going to have a lame duck spot for Raw and putting it on the network look they didn't announce the WWE network going to Peacock until January and then it started up that March. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into more of this after the break because we get some more thoughts on it, plus everything taking place on Dynamite tonight when we get back on Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Sembervivi, filthy Tom Lawler here with you. Wrestling Observer Live. Big boss man Brian Alvarez will be back on the show tomorrow. We will be joined by Lance Storm tomorrow. We'll be making the hot tag from Filthy. Filthy won't be here tomorrow. Unless Brian's not here again tomorrow and we get another late text, but we'll see how that goes. Tom, before the break, I was talking about just being very enthralled with this deal and what the possibilities could be for the WWE Network, which is going their deal with Peacock is up in March of 2026, which means they're going to be doing a lot of negotiations, one would assume, uh, this year and towards the end of the year. And we know what the deal is going to be when it comes to Raw having a lame duck period. And I talked about it with Brian. To me, the smart idea is to put that show in its lame duck form on Peacock because I'm sure Peacock would want the numbers. You know, they already have it anyway. They already have another WWE property. I'm sure they would want those numbers for two months. And if I'm Nick Khan, 
I'm sure I want them to have those numbers as well, too, because I'm still shopping during that time my rights and what's going to happen with them. And I think with Netflix now being involved in this, like you were mentioning when it comes to ESPN, one of the, yeah, it's great to have ESPN there for programming and content, but one of the biggest advantages that you have is you have an incredible library, much like the WWE library, and then you also have that little addendum of the fact that you can sell pay-per-views as well, too. But, you know, I, I wouldn't think, I, I had not thought about the UFC before this deal in their library being shopped around, really, to anyone other than Disney ESPN, but this really does open the door for that. Not only the library, but the UFC fight pass still exists and still shows yes. a number of regional MMA promotions, regional grappling promotions, college wrestling as well. And I don't know what the subscription numbers are for UFC fight pass, but I would hate to see those avenues of you know money go away for these regional promotions i would hate to see less coverage of mma across the board so i hope that fight pass doesn't go the way of the dinosaur i hope it doesn't even get swallowed up by one of the bigger streaming networks but you know i'm sure it's not the highest priority on tko holdings list right now well, it's definitely going to be a priority, though, you know, as it goes along, because TV, once this NBA deal gets settled, we're going to know how much money everybody has left over, because it seems as if WBD really wants it, but doesn't want all of it because it's so damn expensive. Thing, same thing with Disney ESPN, same thing with other people wanting to get their hands in. They all want a piece of it, like it's the NFL, but nobody can afford to have all of it so a huge amount of money is going to get spent there and obviously that's important when it comes to aew because it doesn't seem as though aew's deal is going to get done until the nba's deal finally gets all wrapped up so we'll have to keep our eye on that as we we keep moving along orange sold the knee which is he got attacked i don't remember him getting attacked matt menard on said he was attacked the night before which would have been roh so it's probably roh are you smoking or what's happening what? here? I know, what the fuck? What is, is going happening? On? I have no Bro. Clue. What is this? Dude. I think there's not, I've changed nothing. Smoking is room. bad enough for you, but you don't need Brian, to do it on the air. What is happening here? God. I, I'm glad I'm not the only one experiencing this. Did you die? <laughs> I've ascended. Yeah. I don't know. And it looks like it's changing colors too, which is weird. It's going from red to blue. What the hell's flashing? I don't know, man. Yeah, I everyone's saying this, shut man. your lines, dude. They're completely closed. Oh my god. Maybe I don't open know them. What is There we go. The sun moved. Well, uh, yeah, the sun actually the Oh. Oh. Okay. The sun will continue to move <laughs> and then we'll be able to see again. We then had uh, Abaddon take on Trish Adora. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.